you know, your email, your inbox is just uh, a to-do list that someone else is giving you for their agenda. And, and so that, that makes it very reactive. Some people wake up the first in the morning and they check their inbox and now they're in this flow or, or worse, like social media, right? Uh, which is why, you know, there's that tip about uh, folding your bed first. You practice this something, you have a win, you feel like, hey, I, I can decide what I'm doing now. I always recommend looking at your to-do list the first thing in the morning. And I recommend preparing it the, the night before. So you don't have to have that cognitive dissonance. So you immediately know these are the two or three things I need to tackle. Uh, because if you're not sure what to do, you'll do the thing that's easiest in front of you, the, the cognitive ease, right? Which is the email right in front of you or someone asking you something. Um, so I think, no, that's number one, but saying no is important too. And, and I, I've learned to just say, hey, look, you know, I'd love to help you, but if I say yes to you, then I'm not only, um, you know, irresponsible to, to myself and other people I said yes to, I'm irresponsible to you because I can't give you my best. So, um, so I unfortunately have to say no for now, but here's maybe some have to, so it's just being really sincere, respectful, but still drawing boundaries and saying no. I think that is very important. Um, and, and you just have to decide what to say no, no to based on that prioritization we talked about earlier. Uh, some things you just really want, some things you want to move fast, right? So you do want that fast frequency of, hey, I write an email and you respond to me in two minutes and I reply. And at that point, it's probably good just to call you and, 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 and sort it out. Uh, so, so, but the key is that you want to control that pacing. You don't indiscriminately do that. So say yes or no, and then figure out how to delegate. If there are things that you can delegate, do it. Um, like for instance, for me, I have Bruna, who's a helper who helps me schedule things and whatnot. It takes time to set up and of course it costs money. So it, it is an expense, but if you believe the same hours you can use to do something that's more valuable, then it's worthwhile. If someone's just using that time to play more video games, if they believe, Hey, you now having entertainment in my life is, is valuable and that's, then it's a worthy transaction. Um, but yeah, if you believe your, your time can be better spent doing something that's more valuable, then it's a worthy thing. Now, value is interesting, right? Because there's value in this liquid value, because sometimes you say, yeah, I can do something that is more valuable, but you, I can't turn into money. So I can't, so I can't afford extra help. Right? But there's like, Hey, things I can do that are more valuable, the generous revenue, then it's easy to pay for, for a helper. Um, and I think that just depends on, uh, I would say. In that way, the best thing to do is what what the valuable things you you spend your time on are things that set up um, that monetization that generates revenue, right? If 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 each hour you spend doesn't generate revenue, but you're paying someone to free up your time, then you need to make sure that the time you free up can set up future revenue. You know, finding clients, doing business development, setting up a website, whatever it is that uniquely sets that up. Then it, then I think instead of worthwhile because without that you might you might never have time to set those things up and you never monetize you never create revenue right and that's even worse so it's important to to understand how to find help and delegate i'm really lucky in the sense that now i have op you know we sometimes bring in people to the octalysis group who are op trained and you know they were doing the strategy dashboard and whatnot before I, we had op you know, literally like people's like, oh yeah i read your blog post who i know the eight core drives or you know i read the book which is as you know still like even those 500 pages, still a relatively small amount of knowledge compared to what OP has, right? Probably like five, 8%. So delegate. But then the next thing is super important. Learn to let go. The, the thing is truly this, you, you really can't have a hundred percent quality on everything. So you need to figure out, okay, these are the one to five things, maybe one, two, three, whatever it is that should be high quality, builds your reputation, whatnot, you know, um, and then there are a lot of things you do kind of have to either say no to or say yes, but let go on, on the quality. It's like, hey, if you delegate someone, it's not going to be good as good as the one as what you want to do, but you do have to let go because if you do everything, you're, gonna, you're going crazy. And this is hard because, you know, when I bring in people and they're doing work for clients, sometimes I feel like, oh, it's just, it's really not up to my standards. But the clients are really happy most of the time, all, almost all the time. But the thing is that they increase clients because metrics by 30 to 40%, right? And I look at the design and I'm like, but it could be 70, 80%. Like, why are we having this like B minus design and delivering to the client? And it, it drives me crazy. So either I have to go in and spend 
all my time changing, correcting it, or I can let go because the client, they're happy because they see their metrics increase by 30, 40%. They don't know that it could be 70 or 80%. And so I think you just have to decide, hey, if that's worth letting go. Now, if this is a project that's like, hey, I, this is setting up a legacy, it's a big impact, I'm very passionate about it, then yeah, then spend all your time on it. So, uh, but the key is that there's no magical way to create, generate more time. So like I said, there's that first question, which is you have more, you have a lot of time, you're just not motivated enough to do it. But when you're tackling the second problem, which is you literally just don't have enough time and you want to figure out how you're going to insert those, the slots in, you know, the times into your slots or um, those activities into your time slots. Um, then it's really about, you know, there's no magic formula. You can't generate more time. So you just have to make sure you only do things that are, that you get more out of each hour, basically. And you're focusing on the important things. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's something more specific on it, but that's, that's generally how, I do things, but I also like nowadays I do optimize for my happiness. So, so I kind of like to kind of go with the flow a bit more like, Hey, I feel like doing this. I'm going to do this. I feel like doing that. And, and I think some of, you know, what I like to do is I also have a, a, a big to-do list, which is everything I like to do. That one has, you know, super like prioritizing, like most important, you know, semi or mediocre, whatever. But that's a big list. And then I have my immediate to-do list that I look at on a more regular basis that has the two or three things I want to do. Right and it's really, I fall into this too. I start with, oh, I haven't done these two or three things, but this thing came up. So add it to that. Oh, this, and then it's like 12 things. And it's very important. And I don't always do this, but it's very important to say, all right, I don't want 12 things on my immediate to-do list. I should decide to move nine things to the most important part of the bigger list and get those two or three things done. You know, because your brain just wants to process like what's next, what's next, what's next. Two or three options, a little bit of core drive three. Um, yeah, and then, yeah. So when you talk about the octalis, the octalis is really mostly the first part, which is motivating you to do things, right? The second part, it's all about efficiency, which is a bit more about core drive to develop and accomplish. And like, you, you know, you can tackle your efficient. The lifestyle inertia design has things like ramp ups. Um, which is, you know, sometimes when you do something naturally leads to another, oh yeah. Another thing is that goes back to the impact, do things that can run on its own. First, I, I remember I shared the example, I think a couple of life coaches sessions ago, where I was writing my book and when I get closer, closer to finishing it, I, I realized I was procrastinating on purpose. I didn't want to finish the book because I was in this unknown space of being a published book author. And I don't know that space very well. It feels like scary. Whereas I've spent two years being a person writing a book and that's a comfortable space. Um, but then I realized, hey, and, and of course, any moment there's clients telling me to do stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I'm obviously doing those too. Uh, but then I realized, hey, once I finish the book, it grows legs on its own, right? People read it, they can refer it, it grows, reviews build up. So this, and also getting, getting people to start doing something. So we want to recognize those and do it first, because if we can start turning more wheels at the same time, like then obviously it's more productive, but if you are just turning your own wheel and that's it, then it's not as strong. Well, uh, th thanks you guys. I really appreciate it. A lot of good info. Cool. Yeah. And feel free to keep exploring that question because I think everyone can benefit from better time management, including myself. So if anyone has tips, love to learn them too.